What is up guys, Rekas here with a new video and today we got our first new Hypogen hero in the game. Uh, to most people's surprise there was no rate up associated with him. He was directly released into the Stargate Station. If you've no idea what that is, Stargate Station is the summon method for Celestial and Hypogen heroes. If you don't have that right here, well then that maybe it is because you didn't fulfill the requirements yet which are located in the Covenant letter, you have to recruit 400 times. Epic recruits, normal recruits, rate up recruits, doesn't matter, 400 times, then you will unlock the Stargate Station and it will become available right here. And in the Stargate Station, you can select him aside from the other heroes. And the question is now, of course, should you? And I want to answer that in this video, so stay tuned for that. I'll give you a nice order for which hero to summon first, third, second, whatever. We will look at that. Another way to get him, by the way, and I don't want to, uh, don't want to miss that, is in the guild store for guild medals. Thirty thousand guild medals will give you soul sigil. This is basically like an entire copy. If you have no copies of him yet, that will unlock the hero for you. So. Um, Keep your guild medals ready if you want to get this guy or any other hero. Getting some guild medals always a pretty good idea. Um, what does he do? What kind of hero is he? Well, he is a tank. He is a tank. So in the same class as heroes like Thorin, Temesia, Granny Danny. So some very popular heroes in there. Especially Thorin is of course the immediate comparison. How good is he compared to Thorin? And this is also something we'll find out in a second. Um, First of all, was I positively surprised or negatively? Positively, to be honest. I I, I thought he would be worse. Um, and I th think he's quite good in the way tanks should be. Because he's very tanky. <laughs> and um, not he's not alone. If you look into a battle and we put him in there, an AFK stage, for example, you can see there are two Frestos in here. And the reason for that is his main skill is that he summons in illusion. And this illusion um, is actually a hero that has the same skills as him, that has the same stats as him. Um, and the only difference is that the, the illusion grants a different buff to the hero that is behind him. In the case of the main Fresto, the main Fresto grants the hero right behind him a 14% energy recovery buff and an 80 energy. Which is fairly interesting. I think this AT energy might be broken in some build in the future. Right now, we did not find this. I thought Heben Coco, that could be interesting heroes to give energy to. But right now, we didn't have that build. The other one, the Illusion, gives the hero behind him damage reduction, 14% damage reduction. We combined that in this build with Rainier, just to get make this iron super tanky. We can see how that works out. Uh, in the most part, um, yeah, the iron tended to still die. So... In this case, it was sniped by a Skalita. Um, but the main hero right now, of course, that we want to check out, that is the Fresto. And one of his main features and one of the things that I like the most, and you could see it just a second ago, uh, he can heal when he uh, does his ult and hits enemies with it. And you could already see that right there um, a few seconds ago. He healed just instantly back to full life. Okay, with this team against this stage, we don't stand a chance. Um, but still... You can see there is a big heal. We want to check this out again. I want to really emphasize it. Wait for the first ult and check out the HP bar of this guy. And see how that goes up again. This is the illusion. I think it dies in a second. No? Yeah, okay, it dies there. And now the uh, it comes and bam, back to full life. So if there are some enemies around him and he does this ult, this ult really doesn't do a ton of damage, but it will heal him up again and uh, allow him to keep on tanking. The illusion, by the way, if you have him at Mythic Plus, gets resummoned. So it's not gone forever. Uh, it can be resummoned. And that is something we'll still have to take a little bit of a look on because right now it seems to be a bit bugged. Because mm. the way this is supposed to work is at the beginning of the fight, he's supposed to uh, sacrifice some HP, get this identical illusion on the board, which works, which is nice, and both of them are there, both of them get some damage reduction if they are in the same row, which you should aim for, it really makes a lot of difference, and then you have this ult that we already saw, does a bit of damage in a two-tie range, which is good, and heals him for quite a ton, so decent ult, not really nice to deal damage, like it's a direct comparison to Thorin, we saw, well, Thorin just deals way more damage. If he gets hit, he's just insanely more damage. So it's 
that is something that we should see. We already talked about this skill. This is the contract with the hero behind him with the buffs that uh, they give them. And we also have a bit of a damaging hit in here, um, which is quite interesting. Uh, this is a very fine ability and something, uh, especially in regard to the energy recovery speed and the granted energy that I think can be very broken in the future. Right now, we didn't see a team yet, but I'm very open to you guys' suggestion. Uh, if you want to write something in the comments which you think might be broken, um, then feel free to go ahead. Uh, keep in mind, we also have Mythic Charms coming up, so there are some things that might happen, so it will be pretty cool. Um, then we have this skill. This is a poison skill. Um, it is a bit hard to see in most fights. And the way um, this works and the way you can see it is it pops up as little white numbers of true damage. Is this a lot of damage? No, it really isn't. It really isn't a lot of damage. Um, it really isn't super useful in that regard. Um, we can maybe see it against King Croker because that is probably a question that is going to rise up anyway. Is he good in Dream Realm? Answer is really no. Um, we, can, we can check him out right here, uh, putting him in there. Let's position the um, illusion at the front. We don't use the damage reduction this time. Um, the illusion can tank one of the kill bubbles of um, King Croker. That does work. It is uh, just one time, though. And uh, if the illusion dies to anything but the kill bubble, well, then that won't work. Uh, it takes one, though. It dies and it gets revived. So in that sense, yeah, it does work. And once he stings the enemy hero, which he already did, you can see there are every time those small numbers pop up there dealing a little bit of damage. At the end of the fight, he won't have dealt much damage though, and that is really something that is the case in all of the fights, really, he does. He won't deal much damage at the end, and he isn't really a threat in that regard. Um, his most threatening ability, and there he is gone, is really to stall. He stalls. He's such a big meat wall. He's um, so uh, strong, he's so tanky. When you buff him with Skalita, which is a great combination with him, uh, he gets even more Fist Def, even more M Def. He gets a shield. Uh, his shield is also an ability of Supreme Plus. He would get a shield at the beginning of the fight. Right now, he doesn't get that because, well, we are poor and we didn't have enough Soul Symbols or uh, Stellar Crystals or Luck to get him to Supreme Plus. So, right now, we are a bit stuck at that position. Mm. That being said, though, uh, he already does quite well even at Mythic Plus. I think he would do well even before Mythic Plus, because uh, other than stats, Fistef and MDef, what you really want, um, you really don't need the, uh, the Mythic Plus ability too much, I think. It is a nice ability. We can check out the damage here, and uh, yeah, it's not very good. It's like really nothing, but you can see it from the numbers already, even though... We have to keep in mind the numbers, of course, while they are low, we double them because we have two heroes. We have Fresto and Illusion Fresto. So, yeah, in that sense, we already double them. But this uh, poison, it is nice as a debuff. Haste reduction is good. If he's in the front row, hits like a damage dealer. Very, very nice. The uh, poison itself doesn't really do too much damage. It is kept at 40% of his eight attack. Um, his attack is decent, but of course, uh, you're at that level, yeah, it's like okay ish. Um, and yeah, that's mostly, it's about him tanking. Hero focus is nice, getting extra M left, fist death is good. And then we have the taunt. Um, that is an ability that activates when his illusion is defeated. Um, in a lot of fights, his illusion doesn't actually get defeated, I noticed. Uh, it is some nice damage, some nice stun. Um, and the bug, the thing that most people consider a bug, usually his illusion shouldn't resummon unless... Uh, you have this skill. Fresto summons a new illusion in front of himself if the previous illusion is defeated before he is. The new illusion inherits only 60% of his HP, triggers once per battle. Uh, actually, if you have him plus 10, this triggers. Um, and the reason for that is likely that the order of those is not correct. I think the order, this skill, the 700 skill damage, was supposed to be a skill for level 4. And this one was supposed to be the skill of level te uh, for level 3, which is plus 10. And I think it is coded that way still. So um, for other heroes, it often looks that way. If we find my Flora Bell, for example, she's there. You can see uh, we have a basic buff skill. We have the long skill, basic buff skill. And this is the way they did it in the recent times quite often. 
Um, so I think they wanted to do that here too, and the order is just wrong. And really, it seems to work that way that you want to have plus 10 because then you get the resum delusion. And resumming the illusion is quite nice because, well, you get to activate this again. So it's an extra damage as well. Plus an extra huge tank that you throw on the board for basically three. In PvP, you use that by letting the illusion attack the enemy first. You can order them a bit in the way. You can put the illusion further up into the front or in, the, in a more vulnerable position. And uh, let her attack the uh, enemy at first. If the uh, enemy kills the illusion, then, well, he gets hit, he gets stunned, and um, you get to summon a new illusion. Have fun, enjoy. And um, this is the shield that we are talking about. Nice big shield for the first 12 seconds. Very great if you have it. We sadly hadn't, so a bit sad on that one. And that is a great thing. We have Provocation as the Seasoner skill. Taunts enemy within a two-tier radius for three seconds after each ultimate cast. So... Actually, very great skill for a tank, because what else do you want? You, of course, want to have him taunt the enemy, so they only attack him. Um, what do I think in terms of order, and what do I think in terms of game mode? So PvP, I can see him. I can see him being some Supreme Arena teams, probably in a stall team with some with an OD or something. That is something that I could really see. Just b building a meat wall, putting him together with a Coco, maybe making him even more tanky, diving into that, and then letting an OD clean up from somewhere behind. I could see that work out. Um, not the topic for this video, though, the PvP side of things. Dream Realm, I don't see him. The best thing he has going for himself is that he has like the formation. He buffs, uh, he buffs your um, formation, he buffs your team synergy because when he's on the team, obviously you get the faction bonus and you are on the five faction bonus on this one because he's dark hero, obviously. He's a, he's a hypergen hero. And um, that is like, yes, uh, faction bonus with every single faction. He's neutral in that sense. He's always plus one. So. Um, that is very nice, but other than that, just not really any slot in Dream Realm for him. Arena, he's the greatest PvP hero. I see Thorin supreme there, because the thing Thorin really does well is not really tanking. Thorin isn't really the tankiest tank in that sense, but what Thorin does well is soul retaliation. He just stores damage and dishes out a ton of damage. Thorin is a threat on board. Um, Thresto, Thresto really isn't. He doesn't really feel like a threat. He feels more like a nuisance. He feels more like something that is annoying because on, it's on the board. He feels in the way, which is good because he's a tank. That is the most natural thing a tank can do. Uh, being in the way, being annoying, being hard to clear in some situations. That is like what he is, and I think he does that very well. But if I wanted to decide whether to put him on my team or Thorin, in most cases I would prefer Thorin in PvP, just because there's always this nice situation where Thorin just dishes out a ton of damage and destroys an entire enemy team, and I would want to have that possibility. Um, in a lot of situations, though, Fresto will just do the job you want from a tank better, which is to tank. So he will just do that better. When Thorin is already dead and just sits on the ground, and uh, waits for him to be revived, well, this guy won't. This guy will stand between you and the enemies and will tank a lot of damage. We can try that again, because, uh, though I'm sure it won't work because, uh, well, we didn't adjust our team too well there. But um, you can see he just stands between us and the enemies. Some enemies can still circumvent that and go around, which is, of course, a bit annoying. But uh, in a lot of situations, he does very well uh, with what he does. He just tanks very well. It's not bad if his illusion dies, you saw that, didn't really matter. As long as he gets another ult, gets his heal, he's fine. In this situation, he died last, despite being a mythic plus hero. You can see how much damage is needed to really get him uh, to the ground. This is really insane how much he can tank. And I think that makes him pretty good. I will still see him on par with Thorin in that class of tank, in that regard of being a tank. Um, it's just that for a lot of situations you rather want Thorin. But in some situations, like where you really want a classical tank, I think there is a good position for Fresto to be, um, to be in and to put himself in and to be the hero we really desire there. So, regarding that summoning order, um, I have to give the, plus, the, the first tank that you want to have, I have to give that to Thorin. Not because Fresto is, is worse, like, in that sense. I have to give it to Thorin because Thorin is easier to get. You don't have to go into Stargaze for that. You can normally recruit this guy. So that makes him, in my opinion, easier. In my opinion, preferable. Because he comes from a less limited resource pool. 
which is the normal summon pool. Uh, in terms of heroes, you want to summon from Stargaze. Um, I say Rainier first. You want to get Rainier to upgrade your stats, uh, you upgrade your damage in Dream Realm to make a lot of AFK clears possible. I see, I see Rainier on place one. On place two, I see Skalita. Skalita, got tier PvP. Skalita, uh, in many clears of AFK stages. Absolute monster and uh, lovely animations. So I really like her. Um, and then it is tough for me. It's tough for me to decide between Dianel and Fresto. Dianel is a very cool hero that deals a ton of damage. And for some Duras trials, he is really a key. So he can be very, very nice. The most clears in AFK stages don't really require him. But there are some that, that do or that, that use him and use him to a great success. So that is something to keep on his upside. I would rank him, and I know this is like probably a bit of a lazy decision, on the same place as Fresto, both on place three. I think you could personally decide what to go for. I think we need a little bit of time of testing to probably see if Fresto establishes himself in many AFK stage clears. If he gets to be in there, um, I think that could be cool. If he manages to do so, I think he will have a tough time. Um, but either way, I think you're fine if you go for Fresto or Dianel at that slot. Doesn't really matter. Um, do I regret going for Fresto instead of finishing my Dianel? No, not really. And I'm still not sure which one I'm going to continue because right now, of course, my Fresto is a bit closer to Supreme Plus. Um, but for some pro, um, for some teams that I want to do, I would need the Dianna. So it's a bit difficult. I regret the Burial a little bit because Burial is still clearly my last place. Um, but yeah, so in that regard, he's not really the hero you want to go for immediately. Is he a disappointment in no way, shape or form? He is very interesting, a very cool hero, a very balanced tank and one of the top tier tanks that we have in the game. So. I hope I could help you with this video to decide whether or not you want to summon this guy. If so, please leave me a subscription. Other than that, I wish you a great day. We'll see us in the next one.